All right, back on daytime. Best of luck to Solitaire, who's going to be performing at the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. What great, a great to, guy. Great to see him, uh, you know, going down there and performing and also being part of Canadian Music of Week. Uh, we always love having artists on our show. We always uh -huh. love having authors on our show. And right now we've got a fantastic author joining us in studio. We've got Abigail, who is the author of Under the Moonlit Sky, joining us. Hey, Nab. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for being here. Perfect you. timing being at Literacy Week this week. We <laughs> exactly. love supporting authors, especially right yeah. now. And actually isn't released as of yet, mm -hmm. but it's on its way. Yeah, it'll be releasing uh, first or second week of April. And tell us what it's all about. Uh, well, it's, a, it's for young adults, um, but we actually, early readers have come from all different ages and backgrounds, and they're actually falling in love with it, um, which is very good. Uh, it's a coming-of-age story. Uh, set in 1984, okay. so in the beginning of the novel, you've got a girl from the West, so a lot of Cindy Lauper, Michael Jackson's thrillers just hit the floor. Oh, wow. um, but uh, so she's a very lively girl, a young 20-year-old who's just graduated from university, and um, but sudden turn of events uh, put her on this journey, not of her own choosing, mm -hmm. and it takes her to uh, a country that uh, she's completely unfamiliar with, India. Mm -hmm. Wow! And so her whole life, she's denied this. Uh, her family's heritage, which is Punjabi, mm -hmm. and uh, comes from a Sikh family. And so now she actually finds herself in Delhi, stuck with a family that she's never known, forced to follow traditions that she's denied her whole life, and surprisingly fighting the temptations of an electrifying love. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so she's, she's put on this, this journey towards self-discovery, and she begins to realize a part of herself that uh, she really denied. And, but as she goes towards accepting this part of herself, um, political tensions in India rise as Prime Minister Indira Gandhi is assassinated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what follows is the three days of uh, brutal just chaos and uh, violence as uh, Sikhs are just basically hunted down after, uh, with the aftermath of the assassination. Oh, so, so much happening yeah, in so she's very So she is now challenged because to the world she's a Sikh. But inside, she still hasn't accepted whether she is or not. Now, it, uh, it was some of the autobiographical, where did you get some of the inspiration for this? Um, it, it's it it's is out now a historical fiction. Right. So a lot of the events of what happened in 84, um, it's it's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, none of that's been changed. But just the, just I really wanted to look into the human condition of that time. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of textbook literature about that year, mm -hmm. but nothing about the relationships and just the, the people and what they were going through and just the wonderful people that she meets and grows with. And there's been a lot of people from different backgrounds who've read the story mm -hmm. and they just apply it to their own life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a girl or a journey that anybody can really relate well, to. Well, being mm -hmm. that you're touching on so many different elements mm -hmm. uh, in the history, we were talking about pop culture at that time as yeah. well, of course, political uprisings also. Absolutely. Uh, there's so many different things to connect with, uh, whether you, you know, you've lived it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many uh, trends right now for really uh, reaching those uh, younger mm -hmm. readers right now. And I say yeah. younger, but I really mean teens and yeah. tweens, and they'd really appeal to them. Do you, yeah. do you feel that you're falling into that trend with this book as well? Well, that's kind of the audience I was targeting. Mm -hmm. um, I, wanted, uh, I wanted a fun novel, but I also wanted um, some just a bit of an introduction into that year, because it just was very important for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's a girl who's kind of struggling with identity, and that's a lot of that's something that teenagers go through, mm -hmm. um, all through high school and, and into university. So, no matter what situation you're going through or what your own personal journey is, we're all kind of growing and developing. And from the beginning of the novel till then, I mean, you hate this girl, you love her, you laugh with her, you cry with her, and she's your enemy, she's your friend, and mm -hmm. then you realize that you're her. And, wow. uh, and that's really what I wanted to project, and, yeah. and hopefully that's what we now, did. Now, it's set in India. Have, uh, have you mm -hmm. traveled to India, and did you get some inspiration from your travels there? Uh, I did. I've uh, come I from an Indian family. Yeah, what, what, what kind of background are you? Are you uh, Punjabi? Well, my, you, you, I'm Punjabi. You're Punjabi. Yeah, my parent, parents uh, migrated from, uh, from Punjab, mm -hmm. um, but I was born and raised in Toronto, and the um, past many years I've been, Brant I've been living in Brampton. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have gone back and forth to India quite a bit, and uh, last time I went was in uh, 2007, mm -hmm. right. and uh, that's when I was really doing the research for the book. So it was yeah. great to go back and, uh, and speak with some people. Well, I'm curious what prompted you to choose these topics. Uh, we mentioned mm -hmm. that it is a fi history fiction, mm -hmm. and it's not, not uh, autobiographical at all, mm -hmm. uh, but what prompted you to really focus in this area? Um, a few things. Uh, I was born in 1983. So basically my whole life, 1984, has kind of been in the background, coming yeah. from a Sikh family especially. 
And uh, I mean, I was one years old when my mom w went to the protest in uh, in Toronto in '84 yeah. after yeah. everything that was going on. So, uh, but there was a, there's been a lot of uh, tension and there's been a lot of mystery about what that year was. Right. So in university, I did uh, I did a piece in my international human rights law class, and that brought me to the topic. And I just started seeing that a lot of the a lot of the things that happened then. Um, with like the chaos and everything kind of happened 10 years later in Rwanda. Right. Mm -hmm. So I right. started thinking like what is this thing about identity and the, and the seeds just kind of planted themselves in my brain and eventually the story grew and some of my own experiences of kind of figure out who I was mm -hmm. and this character Aisha who's the main uh, the main female in this she just kind of developed and she wouldn't let go of me <laughs> until it's I put the Interesting, paper. you know, how, how history kind of does repeat itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, the political situation, the religious tensions mm -hmm. in India are always there. They're yeah. still there today. We saw, you know, the Mumbai attacks. Absolutely. Um, what, what, do you think that will ever change? That's, you know what, I hope, th I hope it does. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been so if you look at back at everything from world war, the world wars and, and mm -hmm. so forth and just the even in India I mean it's so unpredictable so we hope things would change and I hope things change but the thing is that it seems like we're not really learning from it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll see in this book as well where one why day everything that, why is, do you think that is though do you think because uh, people are just so rooted in their beliefs and they're not really I mean, it's it, it's yeah. kind of similar to the situation in the the Mid East, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. I think it's just it's the it's the emotional factor. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just very sensitive, especially when it comes to religion mm -hmm. and ethnicity. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all great uh, and uh, for maybe about hundred years and stuff, but one thing happens, and hundred years of history is just thrown out the window. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that person is now your enemy, and um, and that's what happens in this book. In this book, one day everything's great, the next minute your neighbor's after you, mm -hmm. and and the thing mm -hmm. is, why? And so that's kind of what I wanted to explore, and uh, but in, you see, and I and I, I wanted this is not it's not a political novel, right? It's very balanced, mm -hmm. and you see you see um, uh, friends and foes from all sides. Okay, well, listen, so we, we want to ask you. I want to ask you about uh, how Brampton mm -hmm. and the South Asian community here in Brampton mm -hmm. uh, influenced you uh, and your writing, and, mm -hmm. and how that uh, inspired you. But we're going to do that after the break. Okay. Uh, we'll continue uh, chatting with Nav Gill. Uh, author on Daytime After Break.